I think it has, yes. Um, look at the three Vs, as we call them, um, volume, velocity and value, associated to just the sheer mass of data that's available right now and the opportunity that exists in terms of what we can do with it in, our, in order to harness the value based on the insight of that data. It uh, poses tremendous opportunity for a number of organisations. Just look at the amount of data that's being created at the moment. I heard a stat the other day that every minute 48 hours worth of video footage is loaded onto YouTube. Um, 360,000 Instagrams are shared. Um, it's just the amount of data that's being produced and the, the value associated with that data if it's used in the right way. So it's looking at data at this mass level, tying it together in terms of every single component of data that supports the customer's history and being able to do something really actionable with that that ultimately leads to either an increase in ROI or an increased understanding of some of the downstream impacts that determine a customer's relationship with an organisation. I'll give you two extremes actually. The first one is probably one we don't hear very much about and that is the predictive analytics um, and the use of data to understand real downstream levers that influence a customer's value or relationship with an organisation. So we look at um, asset maintenance as a great example. It's not particularly sexy, um, but organisations that have massive um, trucks, massive fleets, they can really deliver tremendous value by just understanding when the downtime of those pieces of equipment is likely to take place. Predicting that can help them figure out how to take maximum use of that equipment so that they don't need to take it off the road, they don't need to take it out of manufacturing. Um, if you're able to create a seamless end-to-end back-end process, it means that the customer experience is less disrupted and that has a massive value in the customer relationship. So that's kind of the, the one that we don't hear very much about. We've then got the one that we hear a lot about, and that is better targeting. Really understanding every interaction that a customer has with an organisation, um, making sure that all of those interaction points are consolidated, understood, and lead to far better targeting of a customer so that the relationship you have is highly personalised, and that can lead to far better return on investment. I think with trust, uh, we, uh, it's, a, it's a probably one of the most overused words at the moment. Um, again, we know that there's a high correlation between a consumer's trust of an organisation and their long-term profitability. And that relationship has been made by data. Um, but if we look at the use of data and how that correlates with trust, then that's interesting too. Because as customers, we're all looking for the what's in it for me. And we've noticed that if we're able to provide very clear value propositions, a really clear method of delivering something useful to a customer, then they are far more likely to trust that their data is being used in the right way. Now, we've also got to make sure that organisations act with absolute integrity and they value a customer's data and deal with that very sensitively and for the customer's best interests. And it is always going to be a hard line to, to get between, um, but it's one that organisations are taking very seriously. And if done right, absolutely, if the customer believes that their data is being used in the right way to deliver direct value back to them, there is a far higher likelihood that they're going to lead to a trusted relationship. And customers have got to be savvy. You know, we've got to make sure that we, we tick the right boxes, um, that we know how our data is being used, and that we take it on ourselves to understand that. So certainly there are trends. Um, there are a lot of consumers out there who will exactly do that. 
They're really happy for their data to be shared if they are getting something directly back from it. There are other consumers though, and there may always be this group of consumers who are private. They don't want to share their data. It doesn't matter what they get in return. They value their privacy and they want to see that privacy um, integrity retained in their relationship with an organisation. And it's important to understand that there are those two camps of individuals and to operate with that integrity um, and to the customer's intent. If the whole intent of using big data in a valuable way is to give value back to the consumer, then in the same breath we've got to make sure that the consumer's preferences feed that, um, that value chain. And because we are now better able than ever before to truly understand behavioural patterns, in many ways we're truly able more than ever before to understand what customer preferences dictate in terms of that longer term relationship and, and it is not easy but it absolutely lies at the heart of data integrity. Traditionally I guess we talk as marketeers in terms of gathering data, understanding it, doing something useful with it and receiving some form of marketing return on investment off the back of that. Now that chain of personalisation and targeting is great and can deliver tremendous value to the consumer and the organisation if you get it right. However, if you can't follow that personalisation through into a sales and a service environment or indeed through any other touch point that that individual has with the organisation, then the, the value and the seamlessness is just going to fall down. And so that's a big challenge for organisations to, to not only do something useful with it, but do something useful with it consistently across every single interaction point that a customer has. Otherwise, that value that you've harnessed through marketing can quickly start to erode.